Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a form tool to the Vectric Tool database. For this demonstration, I'll be using Aspire version 10.019. However, this works exactly the same way with Cut 2D, both desktop and pro, VCarve, both desktop and pro, and Aspire. Now, in previous videos, I've shown you how to enter a tool into the tool database by either importing a tool database file from the manufacturer or by copying an existing tool and just changing criteria like angles or other dimensions. This time, using a form tool, it's a little bit different. And at first, it looks complicated but it's actually very simple. Before we can do anything in the software, we have to have a project open out here because we don't have access to the tool database without one. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new file. All this criteria here doesn't really matter. I just want to remember the thickness of my material. I'm not actually going to be drawing a complex project out here. I'm just focusing on entering the tool in the database, so none of this really matters. So I'll just accept whatever's there. And now we have our full menu bar up here at the top. To access the tool database, we'll go up here to our toolpaths menu, and then come down to the bottom to the tool database. A form tool is basically any tool that leaves a sculpted profile. Now we have standard end mills, ball noses, V bits, and what have you, but if you look down here, you'll see a category called form tools. And there we have an OG bit, we have a round over bit, and a core box bit. Let's just look at the core box bit, for example. And we see over here there's a little drawing that shows the profile of that bit. In order to enter a form tool, you need to have the profile for that bit. Well, where do you get that profile? Well, there are several ways of doing it. You can draw it yourself, taking very careful measurements and making sure you have angles and diameters correct. Or, let me get out of here for a minute, you can look at the manufacturer's website and see if they have provided that for you. The tool I'm going to demonstrate is this point cutting roundover bit that I purchased. And I'll put a link in the description box below to this bit and another by a mana that are very similar. And if we look at the bit here, it's a quarter inch radius roundover bit that has a half inch cutting diameter from this edge here to this edge here and a half inch long cutting length from the tip down to the end of the cutter here. And that may help us get the information we need to enter it, but if we look down here we see in PDF format and DXF format, Whiteside has already done the footwork for us. They've created a DXF file and a PDF file that have that profile already entered into it for us. And that's what we're going to use. Now, in the case of this white side bit, I have gone ahead and I have downloaded the DXF file for this particular bit here. A lot of companies do this. It's not just white side. For instance, if you go up and find a similar bit on the Amana website, this one, the only difference really is the uh, radius, the cutting height. This is 3 16 versus a quarter inch bit. If you look over here, there's a DXF tab. And if you click that tab, you'll see there's a DXF file for this bit as well. Now, the difference is on with Amana, you'll have to create an account and log in to be able to download that file. But if you are a fan of Amana Tools, 
you probably already have a account with them anyway. So what I'm getting at is, is various manufacturers have the tool profile in DXF format. Now if we go back out here to the overview tab, you will see that they also have the Vectric tool database. But if you go to that link, you look over and you'll see this is a tool database for every tool that Amana has uh, done a tool file for. And I'm here to tell you, if you download this tool database, it will slow down your tool database exponentially. It's a huge file. So when you need to go select a tool in your tool database, it slows down the operation tremendously. So I would use caution if you're going to go this route. Better bet is to download and use the DXF file unless the manufacturer has a separate tool file for this particular tool. Now, not all manufacturers have tool files. Not all manufacturers have DXF files or PDF files. So that is something to be aware of. And in this case, I would advise strongly against downloading a DXF file for another brand's tool. If you buy an off-brand or buy a brand from a manufacturer that doesn't have a website or have the DXF files, I would not use the DXF from, say, a MANA or Whiteside or something like that. Because there are differences in geometry, there are differences in measurements, and you won't get an app accurate representation of that tool. So to me, yeah, you might save a dollar or two buying the bit, but to me, it's worth it to go ahead and get a bit from a company who has drawn up that tool's profile. Speaking of which, another company that has done this is Magnate. Magnate makes good quality carbide-tipped router bits that can be used on a CNC. And I've selected a bit here to demonstrate something else. I've selected this uh, bowl and tray plunge router bit. It's two flute carbide tipped. And here you can see the bit. It's got a quarter inch radius out here on the edge and a very wide base. So it cuts out a large amount of material. And this is used for making plates, bowls, trays, etc. It's got a quarter inch radius, a three quarter inch cutting diameter, a five eighths of an inch cutting height, and it uses a quarter inch shank. It's a decent quality bit. Magnate itself does not have the profiles on their website. They have teamed up with Legacy Woodworking maker of the Legacy CNC series, and Legacy has provided a DXF file with various tool profiles on it. They don't cover all of Magnate tools, but they cover quite a bit. If you go to Legacy's homepage, I'll show you how I got to this page. If you go to Legacy's homepage, come over under Training, come down to Customer Support Files, click on that link there. It'll bring up this page here, and there is the DXF of all the various router bit profiles. Now, I've already downloaded both this DXF file here and the DXF file for the point cutting roundover bit. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the DXF file that's provided by Legacy Woodworking for the Magnate bits. Now we get that file open and we look and we see that there are several bits here. Now a lot of these you don't need. You don't need, for instance, a tool profile for a quarter inch downcut spiral end mill. 
And that's just not necessary. You won't need it for a V bit either. You just enter the tool angle. You may or may not decide to use a, um, a Mana Tools spoil board surfacing bit. You don't need the profile for that either, or a tapered ball nose bit. It's mainly the forming tools over here that you'll need the profile vector for. And I'm going to show you how to use these vector profiles for a couple of different bits because each manufacturer does their DXF files a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and close out of here. I don't want to save any changes. And let's go back into Aspire. Since I have this point cutting roundover bit, that's the bit that I'm going to put into my tool database. I'll demonstrate how to use one of those magnate profiles in a, in a minute. But first, I want to go ahead and get my point cutting roundover bit installed. First thing I'll need to do is I'll need to import that vector. Now, just a little word here. DXF files take up a lot of resources. So this can slow things down at first. So I'll go up here to the File menu, come down to Import, Import Vectors. I'll navigate to the appropriate folder. And there is the DXF file that has my point cutting roundover bit profile in it. And I'll go ahead and open that. And with the DXF selected, I'll go ahead and align it to the center of my material. Now, let me click off here so you can read this. Whiteside puts a lot of extra information in their DXF file. And that's fine. But what we're concerned with is the tool outline here. Now, what Vectric requires is that we use just the right side of the tool's profile. And thankfully, Whiteside knows this. So they have separated these vectors into the various constituent components. So to use this, all we need to do is select the other vectors. And you notice I'm drawing a box here from left to right, which means everything within that box will be selected. Then release my mouse button, and it selects all these vectors out here. Now I can just tap the delete key, and those vectors are gone. Now I need to select this vector and I need to make sure that this is all joined into one open vector. So just to check I'll go over here to join open vectors and it sure is. It's already one open vector and the join button is grayed out. I can't use it. That's fine. That's what I need. One open vector that describes the right side of the tool's profile. So with that selected, I can now enter this tool into the database. Let me zoom out here just slightly. I'll go up to my Tool Paths tab, and I'll come down to Tool Database. Now I'm in Imperial Tools because this is an Imperial tool. And I'll scroll down here to the Form Tools, and then come down here to Plus. I want to add a tool under the selected group. I'll just click that plus sign. What I want to do is I want to come up here under tool type. And you see it's a drop down menu. I'll click over here. I want to enter a form tool. So I'll click on form tool. And immediately we see our drawing is completed over here. The database took the right side profile and projected it out. To both sides. Now we want to finish entering the information. Right up here is the tool's name. I want to enter, uh, edit that tool's name, so I'll click on this box over here. And we'll see up in here this convention, this naming format up here. I want to go by close to the same 
format that Vectric uses here. So I will enter round over, then in parentheses, 0.25 inch, close parentheses. Then off here after that, I'm going to enter point cutting. I'm entering point cutting because there are also flat cutting. They do not have that sharp point. They have a flat surface on the bottom. And I may get some of those in the future. So I want to make sure I differentiate this bit because it will have effect on the tool path. I don't want to set this as the default for every form tool I enter after this. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And we see that I have the round over quarter inch point cutting entered right there. Now in my notes up here, I want to enter the tool manufacturer and the part number. And that tells me which bit this is, because I may get another quarter inch radius round over. Just traveling down the form here, we get into units. This is measured in inches. We have the diameter. Now, if you notice this block, I'm clicking in here and it won't let me do anything. It's grayed out. It has taken this vector and it has already projected that the cutting diameter is a half inch. I do need to enter the number of flutes. It is a two flute bit. And now I'll click on the Create Settings button. It has already set up using two flutes. It's figured out a pass depth and a step over. It has taken the feed rate and plunge rate and router RPMs from the tools I already have here in my tool database. I'm not going to concern myself with a step over. Using this type of a tool, you're probably never going to use a step over. I mean, I don't anticipate a, con a case where I'm going to plunge it down, cut that radius, step over and cut another radius. It could happen, but I don't foresee that happening. So I'm not even going to bother changing that. I'll leave that as is. What I am going to concern myself with is the pass depth. Now this bit is new to me. I've never used a point cutting round over bit. So it's going to be an experiment. I don't know how aggressively I want to push it. So it has taken the quarter inch and divided it in half, giving me a pass depth of an eighth of an inch. As I'm just experimenting with this, I want to be a little more conservative. So I'm going to change that to a sixteenth of an inch. So I'll enter 0625, which gives me a sixteenth of an inch. I can always come back and modify this later if I decide that's too shallow. But I would rather cut too shallow for my first few cuts than cut too deep and break a bit before I ever actually get to use it. I'm going to start my feed rate at 40 because again, I can increase my feed rate on the fly. And because this is a deep cutting bit, I'm going to set my plunge rate to half of that, or 20. Now, my spindle speed is not controlled by the software, so this doesn't really matter here for me. It does give me a chip load based on these dimensions here, but I'm going to ignore that right now as well. Because as I said, I'm experimenting with this bit. This will get modified. And then when I find the right balance, that's what I'll run with. But for now, just to get the bit entered into the database, I'll go ahead and click Apply. And all of this criteria has been saved. I now have my roundover bit entered into my tool database, and it's available for use. So I can click OK, and we're finished with that DXF file.
Now I can hold down control, tap the letter A to select all of the vectors, and just on my keyboard tap delete. And this may take a few seconds because as I say, DXF files take up a lot of resources. Okay, with that DXF file deleted, I can now demonstrate using the Magnate DXF. Because if you remember, it was pretty big. So let's go ahead and import that other DXF file. And that was this one right here. I'll select it, open it. And it loads the DXF file with all of these bit profiles in it. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to click off just to deselect. The bit I've chosen to demonstrate is this Boland tray plunging router bit. Pay particular attention to the model number, 7801. Now, there is an S7801. The only difference is the shank diameter. Okay, the, the S7801 is for a half inch shank. The 7801 is a quarter inch shank. That's the only difference. And I'm using this one to show you that while it is available over here in this DXF file, not every single bit Magnate makes is in this DXF file. So this is an evolving list. And as they add more, the DXF may or may not change. Another warning I will give you is not to attempt to enter any bit that creates an undercut. What do I mean by that? If we look over here, we'll see that there are a couple of different dovetail bits here of varying angles. Looking at this one here, the 406, this is an example of an undercut, meaning that the bit is wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And keyhole bits are similar. This edge here is going to cut under the top edge. The Vectric tool database will not let you enter any bit that creates an undercut. Now that's not stricted, restricted to dovetails. If any of these other forming tools out here create an undercut, the tool database will not allow that tool to be entered. The reason I'm going into the magnet DXF is because every software manufacturer is a little bit different. There is no standardization on this. Some software requires the entire radius. For instance, using this model 7801 Bolin tray bit, if I select that vector, you see the entire vector is one piece. Some manufacturers need the entire vector. Some, like the Vectric, only need the right side. So we will have to modify that vector. Now, the way we'll take care of this is we'll go ahead and hold down the Control, tap the letter A to select all of these bit profiles. And we know that this is the one we want, the model 7801. I'll hold down Shift, click on that profile to deselect it. Then I'm going to delete all of the other vectors because I don't need them anymore. Let's go ahead and hit Delete. So with that vector deleted, I can now select it, zoom out, come over here, and align it to the center of my material. Close, click off, and zoom back to my material here. Okay, now I can zoom in on this vector a bit. And again, I only need the right side of this vector. So there are a couple of ways I can do this. I can draw a polyline down the center of it and then use my trim tool to trim away the left side of this vector and then trim away the polyline because I no longer need it, or I can go into node editing. Now what I'll do, I'll do that to demonstrate how simple this is. 
Just click on the vector to select it. Tap the letter N on my keyboard. Now I'll zoom in here and right along my zero line, I'll come up onto this vector, right click, and insert a point. Then I'm going to go back to that point I just inserted, right click, and cut the vector. You'll see this side of the vector is deselected. This side of the vector is selected. Now I can just tap the delete key on my keyboard and the left side of that vector is gone. I can tap the letter N to come back out of node editing. There's the right side of my vector. Now I can select it. Go over here to join vectors to make sure it's one single open vector and it is. Close. Now I can come down to my tool database and enter it the same as I did my point cutting round over bit. I'm not going to actually enter this bit because I don't own it and I don't want to clog up my database with a bunch of tools I don't own. So that's how you enter the bit into the tool database. Now let me demonstrate how I would use that bit, the point cutting roundover bit that I just entered in my database. And I don't have a project in mind for this, so let's just cut out a few shapes. I'll start off with a rectangle. I'm going to use radius external corners with a quarter inch radius, and I'm just going to draw one right here. That's good enough. And I'll draw another one down here. That's okay. I'll close that and I'll come up here to draw a circle and I'll draw one about right here. Close that. I'll click this again to go into move and transform mode. Kind of bring it down, put the center of it on my Y0 line. And there we go. I have three shapes. Whether I'm cutting these out because these are the parts I want to keep, these three, or if I'm cutting these out and the rest of the material is what I'm keeping, that's going to decide which type of toolpath and how I calculate that toolpath. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. We'll go over here to the toolpath tab, and for all three of these, I'm just going to use a profile toolpath. So I'll select all three. I'll come up here to Profile Toolpath. In the Profile Toolpath, I'll need to set a cutting depth. On a roundover bit, my cutting depth needs to be the same as the radius. I've got a quarter inch radius. I want it to cut a quarter inch deep into the material. So, quarter inch is already entered. Hey, good deal. Go in and select the bit that I entered earlier. And there it is. Select that. It's going to take four passes because remember, at first I have it set for a sixteenth of an inch per pass. And I'm going to show you cutting on the vector because again, these are the parts that I want to save. The rest of the material is scrap. I want to cut on the vector. That'll place that sharp point on this vector and it's going to follow it, rounding over this edge here. I'm not going to change anything else. We'll call this profile round over. We'll calculate that toolpath. We'll go ahead and preview it. And we see we have a nice roundover both on the material side and on the part side. Okay. Hovering our cursor over the title, we see that it cut a max depth of a quarter of an inch, just as expected. And we don't have any funny steps here on top that we're going to have to deal with. It's cutting down to the edge of that radius and stopping. That is, assuming the top of our material is nice and flat. But now we want to cut these out and get rid of the waste. So 
we'll go back to a straight Z view, close our preview, go back over to the 2D view, and with these vectors selected again, we'll come over here to the Profile Toolpath. I want to cut all the way through the material this time. And I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill to cut out my profile. Select that. But this time I want to go outside the vector. I want the edge of that cutting diameter to run on the outside edge of this vector. I'm not going to change anything else. We'll call this profile cutout. And we'll calculate that toolpath. And we see our toolpath is way out here on the outside of the material. That's what we want. We'll preview it. Let it cut out our parts. Double click to get rid of the waste. And we have our individual parts nicely rounded over. There may be some cleanup sanding involved, but there almost always is, but we don't have any weird steps here. The bit didn't cut too deep. And we're all set. Let me reset my preview. Come back over in my 2D view for a second and say, well, what if we weren't cutting out these parts to save? What if this here is the material we, we want to save? And I want to round over this edge of the material and throw these pieces out. Well, that's a simple matter of coming back up into our round over toolpath. And we'll select outside the vector. Recalculate that. Then preview. It looks identical. But then when we go here to Profile Cutout and preview that, we see it's cutting out the inside disks, leaving us with a nicely rounded edge on our desired piece. Now this could be used if you weren't cutting it out. Uh, let's say, for example, we'll reset our preview and go back to a Z view. Let's say we're not cutting this out. We want this round over to be used in conjunction with a pocket. We can do that as well. If we want to pocket out this material here, we'll do a pocket tool path. Let's cut 5 eighths of an inch deep. So we'll go 0.625 and we're going to use a quarter inch end mill. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just use that quarter inch end mill. I'm not going to do a uh, larger area clearance tool and we'll just leave that as it is. Now let me move up here and we'll pocket out. We'll preview that pocket. Okay, with our pocket tool path previewed, we're looking good. Let's go with our profile round over. I'll leave it at this angle so we can see it as it's cutting. We'll preview that. And I made a mistake. I went to the outside. I should have gone to the inside. We'll undo last. We'll open up our round over and we'll go to the inside. Calculate it. Preview it. And nothing's happening. Moving to the inside of the vector moves that tip over so far it doesn't actually touch the material. We'll go back over and we'll try on and calculate it. Now let's preview that. There's our nice gentle round over. Sometimes it takes a little bit of experimentation. So we have 
pocketed area with a nice round over on all of our pieces. Then we can come back in here. I would probably offset about three eighths of an inch outside. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's take select all of them come down here to offset outwards three eighths of an inch three slash eight equals three seven five offset them and we offset all three close that go back over into the tool paths tab take our profile cut out Click off to deselect, and I'll select this vector, hold down shift, this vector, this vector, calculate. Then we'll preview that. And we have some little bowls or trays. I'm thinking pick dish for the guitarist in your life or whatever. Now, yeah, we could have offset that out a half inch so that we had a round over on the, and then created a round over for the outside of that. But this was just a quick demonstration to show you that there are various ways you could use a point cutting round over bit with your work and how to enter that point cutting round over bit into your tool database. And the same method is used for all form tools to enter them into the Vectric database. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget, today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific time, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we'll discuss everything that we've talked about in this video. Now, I've, as I said before, I've already done videos on entering a tool into the database by copying an existing tool and by using a tool file as provided by the manufacturer. And I've put those videos on a playlist. And I'll put a link to that playlist in the description box below. And in a card on the end screen to this video, which will be showing up in a couple of minutes. So, once again, this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we'll discuss everything I've covered in this video or other methods of entering a tool into the Vectric tool database. So, I hope to see you there. These live Q&A sessions are a good excuse to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, click that little notification bell right next to the red subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.